Okay, so welcome to the Microsoft Developer Sync, August 10th. Here we are. Um, so this week we're going to try something a little bit different. We're uh, evolving our process here. Uh, we're going to start off by going a little bit more in depth in the plan for the week uh, and going through our ticket system in JIRA and uh, make sure that we've got a good roadmap ahead of us. And uh, then in future meetings throughout the week, we'll keep them a little bit shorter and uh, just talk about what's going on, uh, you know, for, for that day. Um, so uh, everybody should have had a chance to take a look at the tickets and uh, and update those ahead of this meeting. Um, and so we should be able to go through those now and uh, just take a look at um, what the plan is going to be. So um, Ken, would you like to start us off? And, yeah, uh, I'll start off by referencing uh, the parent ticket PREC 50. Let me just bring it up real quick. Um, PREC 60, I mean. Uh, so let's find that, which is kind of our parent ticket. Um, okay, I actually have a bookmark for it. Thank goodness. So from a high level, we're working on phase one of the precise roadmap. Um, the precise roadmap as outlined on uh, PREC 60, the goal of this project is to implement a process of constant process improvement for our default wake word model. Currently the approach that we're taking is to increase our available data. And then downstream we'll be balancing that data in an attempt to uh, produce a better model that's more uh, receptive to uh, different uh, classifications like pitch and age group. Um, there's three sub projects under the precise roadmap right now. There's the uh, data capture from devices project. Uh, each of these contains some open issues that we could discuss if you wanted to, but there's data capture from devices, there's user community tagging of that captured data, and there's creation of new models from that captured data. And the three sub tickets are basically uh, 64, 65, and 69. Um, if I look at where we're currently at in data capture from devices, the current open issues on that are, hold on. I don't have, by the way, I don't have delete privileges, so I, it's a little bit messy. I created issues and I couldn't delete them, so they tie to the actual issue. Okay, so some of the sub projects we're working on for data capture are the new database schema. Uh, we want to add the existing NAS mount to the new server, maybe. Uh, we're definitely uh, developing an endpoint to save that data to a temp directory and update a database with it. As part of this process, one of the subtasks is a job that runs periodically, probably once a night, that will move the data from the temporary directory to its final location and also update the database accordingly. And the final task would be to change the existing URL to point to the new endpoint or switch over the existing. Um, the open issues I see for this particular subtask currently are how our existing device is migrated. Do we make the new endpoint backward compatible or do we need to update core? And what becomes of data if we update core and people don't update their installation? Um, and Chris was going to look into whether or not updating core and changing the endpoint was going to break stuff. So I guess we'll have to keep this open until we get back with Chris. Um, second question was, do we want to add the network uh, access storage to the actual server or SCP over the files each night? Chris was in favor of the latter. Um, so if that's the case, we don't need to mount the NAS there, although I suspect mounting the NAS there might not be a bad idea. Um, what is the query to determine the set of files to be moved each e evening? Do we rely on the concept of all the files currently in the temporary directory, or do we have some other mechanism for that? Another open item is how do we get the existing data into the new database? In other words, we have a little over 1.6 million samples. Um, as part of the third project of sub project of this phase, I'm working on restructuring that data. Um, and so maybe part of that process is to get it into the new database after it's been dealt with. 
Um, another issue that's open is how does a user communicate to us that they want their data deleted and how do we respond? Um, uh, do we need a bulk user contribution endpoint? And finally, do we need to update our privacy policy as a result of any of this? So that's currently kind of the data capture piece we're working on. Uh, I'm specifically <laughs> actually not working on much of this. I'm working on the, uh, the data model stuff. Did you want me to go over that or was this good enough to get us started? No, I think that's a great, no, overview, that's a great overview of the work we're doing. The work we're doing. Um, uh, what is your what is plan your for the next week? Yeah, my plan for the next week is on the third sub project. Okay, let's go so there. Okay, let's go there. Yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so third is creation of new models from captured data, but there's also a bunch of outstanding issues with the existing data that are being addressed, and I'll go into those now. Okay. Uh, come on, my computer's a little slow. Um, I was just thinking. If it doesn't already exist, we should have uh, a list of like, domains and endpoints that we want to maintain in perpetuity, even if we turn them off. Um, just thinking if, you know, imagining that uh, we had a, an endpoint where people used to upload data to, and then, you know, in six, 12 months' time, we forget about it, then people using the old system would potentially be uploading to random server right so this is one of the open issues right that i just discussed which is um, once chris determines if he changes the endpoint and it's no longer backward compatible what would happen to the existing core devices it hadn't upgraded would they just throw exceptions or would yeah. they keep yeah. dumping into a uh, broken endpoint now uh, there's two ways we could attack this. The oh, one is I'll, I'll, I'll update. I didn't mean to derail you. Sorry, I was just saying. Oh, okay. okay yeah. Why you find anything? But I'll, I'll update the ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a ticket out for the discussion of this exact issue, uh, or at least it's in the uh, open issues of the uh, PREC 60 or the first subtask ticket. All right. For, so for me, Michael, um, I'm working on this week establishing the current default data sets that we're training from. Uh, so I've built a new model. And uh, most of this work is already done. I'm going to uh, take that existing model and, as we had just discussed, try to get it out into the publicly accessible area. Um, once I do that, I need to figure out a way to track what the hyperparameters and data sets that went into that model are and call those data sets our base data set. Um, the original model that we distribute was is not reproducible because of the way the data sets were structured. It was randomly gathered data, so you couldn't reproduce it. The goal here is to say, here is the data set for training that was used for this model. Here is the validation data, and here is the test data it was tested against. And moving forward, we're enhancing those basic data sets. And I need to get them under some sort of revision control somewhere. That's my problem, to figure out how to do that. So what I'm working on is establishing the current default data sets this week. I'm working on training new models. I have a new model. I have some others I want to train with some different hyperparameters. Um, and then two other things that are kind of more administrative. One is putting the new model installation instructions in a publicly uh, accessible place. That's what Gez and I were talking about, that I have an instruction page that's on Confluence that we want to share with the public, but it references the PB and PP params file. So now I know where to put those so I can check them in and then set links. So I'm working on that. And then um, an old uh, outstanding ticket that Josh created was get the environment set up, documented, and repeatable. Uh, the training environment. And where he was coming from on this ticket was, OK, uh, you think you have control over the process. Prove it. Go set up an Ubuntu server somewhere and do it and make sure the documentation is good. So those are the four things I'll be working on this week. OK, great. Thanks. And those are all in progress under PREC 69.
Uh, and as I as I make progress, I will update them and open other ones in progress. Okay, great. So, who are you working with on any of these tickets? Or is this all work that you're doing on your own for the most part, or are you working with Chris or Chris? On, on this, on this, I'm working on my own. Um, but there are some things that are open that Chris and I have to discuss to button up what he's doing. Um, but some of it, um, you know, I have to speak with him and get his input. Uh, some of it has to do with what we talked about, like whether we can take down the existing API or not. Um, how, you know, kind of the open issues I, I read out, one of them is how do we know what files need to be moved each night? I'll probably end up writing that code, but I need to have that question answered. And um, then there was another one I forget, but it was an open issue regarding, uh, oh, how do I, uh, you know, select and update that data when it's actually moved and incorporated into our new default data sets? How do we indicate that in the database somehow? Hmm. Um, what's, what's also open, but it's blocked, by the way, that I haven't um, put in progress because it's blocked is I'm waiting for the existing NAS to be backed up. I spoke with Josh and Daniel on Friday, and Josh actually ordered the removable media. And so the existing 1.6 million samples are going to be backed up. So once that's done, then I need to actually clean out that, that subdirectory and restructure that data and meet with Chris and update the database. And then the final piece of the puzzle, which, has, which is as who's going to do it is yet to be defined, is we've got the existing data that we want. We have 1.1 million rows in that database. So how does that get into the new Postgres database for Celine that Chris is creating? And Chris and I will talk about that and figure that out. So Chris and I need to meet this week. OK, great. Yeah, so um, for those of you who missed it, uh, Chris is uh, on his way back uh, from uh, a personal trip. So. He'll be back in the office tomorrow. Um, OK, so thanks, Ken. That's uh, that's great. Uh, so Gez. Yeah, um, my my stuff has been focused on the, um, the upcoming releases. Um, so I've actually uh, activated an active sprint for Minecraft Core 20.2.5, um, which has got the pieces mapped out for um, for things that we want to merge in before that release, um, as well as you know meta tasks like writing the release notes and and that kind of a thing. Um, so yeah, I've been spending a fair bit of time just reviewing PRs and, and merging things in preparation for that. Um, the aim is to get this release out by the end of this week um, and then have uh, all of the 20.8 major release changes in by the end of next week um, so that we can have uh, a merge freeze um, for a week of testing before the end of the month and then do the actual 20.8 major release uh, on Monday the 31st with confidence that it's, you know, people have been using it and would have said something <laughs> if there was any issues. Um, yeah, so, uh, so take a look in the... Um, in the sprint for, for 20.2.5. Um, there's another sprint that's not yet activated for 20.8. Um, uh, so if there's anything that people disagree with in there, then take a look. I'll, I'll specifically chat to Chris Bear about it because he probably has more um, opinions than, than other people in the room. Um, but I think uh, probably the big blocker at the moment is is just getting some of these PRs um, reviewed because um, Chris has been focused on some other stuff. Uh, at some point, yeah, need to um, 
debating. <laughs> At some point, uh, I'll, I'll uh, consider just merging them without Chris's review, but um, ideally, we wouldn't do that. Um, but yeah, we need to we need to get this stuff moving forward. So yeah, let's ask. Uh, we'll just get in touch with Chris. Uh, he should be back. Uh, I know that he's been a little bit, um, uh, you know, preoccupied. Uh, but yeah, now that he's back, he should be uh, back up to full speed. And uh, yeah, so you know, hit him up tomorrow or tonight. And uh, yeah, see if you can't get those. And if you can't, then yeah, go ahead and I guess you're going to have to self-review them. Or maybe you can get Ken to, Ken to do it for you. Or OK, you know, I don't know. Uh, most of them I have been working on OK with. Um, yeah, or, okay. you know, they're OK's contributions that I've reviewed. Um, right. I think the, the one that I think is going to be tricky still is um, I just haven't, uh, haven't looked deeply at what's changing in Lingua Franca yet. So that's going to be my focus mm -hmm. today. Um, there's some big changes. Uh, on the cards, um, they're predominantly, um, there's been a huge refactor um, so that new languages and new functions when they're added will be automatically detected so that it just makes the development process a little bit easier um, because you can just, you know, add things and then Lingua Franca will detect them and therefore Microcore will know that they're there and, and they'll all just start magically working as, as you add things. Um, that's the theory, so I want to make sure that that is actually the case. Um, uh, but yeah, everything else I think is in a pretty good place. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, what's the expected release date for the twenty oh eight? The so I think we have a soft. Like, you know, have everything in dev um, by the end of next week. So by, say, the 20th, the 21st of August. Um, but then actually do the hard release, pushing out to Mark 1s and, and to production on the 31st. OK. Good. Yeah. All right. Um, Anything else? Uh, don't think. Well, TTS stuff with um, with El Chino is continuing. Um, yeah, just continuing to uh, clean up the data. Um, uh, but it's sounding it's sounding good. Um, we'll probably go back to George Ann and get some get some new samples recorded. Um, the, it's particularly having a problem with Mycroft, which is <laughs> not not ideal for a, <laughs> our own TTS. Um, but it's kind of having a, a problem with uh, sounds like uh, R and like AH and MY, MY, that sort of thing. It kind of rolls, does a rolled R kind of a sound on them. So um, I think if we if we bolster the the phrases that contain those things, then we should be able to. Smooth that out a bit, um, but anyway, Ryan, Ryan's still working on that, so we're not going to go back to to the, um, the voice artist uh, until we we know exactly what we want, and we don't want to go back to them multiple times and all that sort of stuff. So right, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, and in terms of any community updates, are we staying on top of the release schedule for that? And uh, release schedule for what do you mean well, by community updates well I, um we have a regular schedule for doing like blog posts and that sort of thing don't we so uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> we we used to yeah uh we're not we're not really keeping up on that to be honest um okay. yeah it's uh, I, i've I, got several on my agenda to write um yeah, so I've got several on my agenda to write. The uh, uh, a lot of it's waiting on setting up the infrastructure surrounding crowdsourcing some of the lawsuit stuff, and so, uh, and the, I'm not waiting on other team members. I'm just waiting on me setting up the infrastructure. Um, 
Okay. So anyway, I, what I, I'd like to have a call to action once we send that out that says, hey, go here, help, right? And because I don't have anything concrete for the community to do, I've been holding off on it. But we could do, do an update without that stuff pretty easily. Sure. I was, I was, yeah. I guess I was more referring to just updates on, on all the changes that have made been made in the in the core and that sort of thing. Um, you know, do we do a general uh, update like, hey, this is the stuff we've been working on. This is the stuff we are working on for the future. That kind of that kind of update for the community. Yeah. So we definitely do those for releases, um, and and they'll go into the to the email mail outs as well. Um, We've also been, you know, posting these meetings um, uh, pretty regularly, um, which has been well received. Um, uh, but yeah, we we have previously been more um, regular in our external communications. I do think we should um, we should do one uh, with all of the findings from that the first SJ201 um, board that we got. Um, so I think Johnny was chatting to Derek about that. Um, so he might hear more about that in a minute. Um, but I do think, yeah, we need to be realistic about what we can achieve with a smaller team. And um, yeah, as I sort of talked to with, um, with Johnny and, and Chris Adair. Um, it's just with with my time being much more focused on on core and and the development side of things, I just haven't had the time to to get into blog posts and um, yeah, pushing the newsletters and stuff out. So yeah, that's understandable. Um, just let's keep an eye on it and keep the community apprised of. You know what we're doing, especially as the plan around precise and the because this is specifically about involving the community and in, you know in the data, uh, getting that process back online. Yeah. And, um, so I think when we've got uh, a little bit more to point out, I think it'll be newsworthy. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Great. Thanks, guys. Uh, Derek. All right, so um, my projects kind of revolve around the, mostly around the Mark II dev kit. And uh, pro the good thing with project rollover prototype uh, sprint is we close that out. So we sent all of the prototypes. Uh, so that one's done. And then I've got a few things in just the, the generic sprint. Um, so to uh, for the dev kit, um, I'll start with what Gez mentioned there. So I do have a, a task to uh, basically write a little blog post uh, and a newsletter update on what we've been talking about with uh, <clears throat> the progress of the first prototype of the SJ201. So we've got boards back now, but we were still waiting on that second half of the board. We did, uh, the way we did it was one half was, um, it's, it's a two-layer board, or it's a two-sided board, um, and the prototyping place we used um, could do quick spins on one-sided assembly. We had some some boards that were at the top, and some boards at the half, and the bottom half, and we were going to sandwich them together. Well, something happened, and the second set got lost in shipment from China. Um, so Kevin did what he could to assemble the boards himself by hand. Um, but there were some issues that that uh, he solved that couldn't totally overcome, although he's going to try and, and uh, do a couple of modifications. But we're expecting that it's not really going to get a fully functioning board um, with this spin. And so moving to do a mixed round of prototypes that have uh, both sides uh, are going to be assembled, so probably using a different assembly house. Um, that being said, there was a lot of the systems that could have been that were tested and um, were successful. Uh, so, like the LEDs and buttons and the power system. Uh, anything else I'm forgetting there, Michael? Uh, the USB sound card and the speakers. Yeah, yeah, that's great. 
so yeah, a lot of stuff turned out good. Um, so, and then a lot of comments from the community that we're also incorporating into the second uh, spin. Uh, so that's all been really good. Um, <clears throat> and Kevin has also been very active now in the uh, Mark II channel on uh, Mattermost. So lots of good discussion over there. Okay, uh, so yeah, this is kind of just a general update. But uh, so what I'm working on specifically is a few tickets uh, around uh, getting enclosures for testing um, and then getting towards our first uh, finalist, uh, first full assembly. So first ticket on that is the getting a laser cut enclosure design out there. Uh, so we've got a uh, couple of those put together or we still need to print the audio chamber aspect of it, but the actual exterior enclosure. Um, we've got a couple of those, and I'm sharing the documentation with Kevin so he can build some more. And that's what we we'll use for the first round of testing. Um, and then I'm gonna continue to work on the first fully 3D printed uh, assembly. Uh, the, the goal of this is, not to be ready for injection molding yet, but to design it for um, FFF 3D printing or FDM 3D printing so that it's more accessible both from Kevin but also from the community. And that first prototype will be the first one that we can really test the acoustic performance of the microphones and such in a, an enclosure. Uh, laser cut one, everything's exposed. Uh, good for working and good for first validations, but will give us full acoustic tests or heat tests or anything like that for that one. So that's, uh, that's gonna include like, you know, mounting the display, mounting the, the SJ201 board, um, decoupling of the audio chamber, and you know, the audio chamber is a separate chamber inside, and decoupling of the board, the SJ201, uh, with some like foam tape and stuff like that. Um, and the other thing that's kind of active is that, like I mentioned before, that second, uh, second prototype spin. So that's kind of it for the Mark II DK Sprint. Um, I've got a couple things in Sprint 12. Um, I've got uh, some OTC, an OTC device to build for Kim and um, some instructions to give Josh to update his to a Raspberry Pi 4. And then I still need to build another OTC device myself. Um, and the reason I want to do that is to uh, make some progress on the QT QV uh, ticket as well. So I just haven't really been able to do much there because I don't have a, a device. <laughs> so, um, and I expect it'll be a little while before we're gonna be able to do much with the SJ201 based devices. So yeah, that's it for me. OK, great. Um, let's see. Chris did say he'd updated his tickets here. We could take a look and see if we can make any sense of this. Um, dun, dun, dun. OK. Hmm. Yeah, I suspect Yeah, I suspect we'll have to wait for him to come back and explain his uh, his task list to us. Um I see a sprint it looks called like he finished the database schema. Um Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um but I don't know, it doesn't seem uh, it's in review, so we need to allocate that one to someone to review, I think. Should that go to Ken? I think so. Yeah, if it's if it's done, send it over to me. Uh, we, we had discussed a couple of uh, changes last week. I'm not sure if he had a chance to get to them or not, but I'll take a look and update the ticket accordingly. Just go ahead and assign it to me, please. Yeah, cool. Done that. Um, anyway, that was the only bit that I saw that might need our attention right yeah and, and for the it looks like he's working on the ddl for implementing the wake word schema and uh in his to-do list is updating the references to the existing wake word tables which i imagine is work he's gonna have to coordinate with you ken 
Um, uh, well, so he's he's got the new schema that you know I'm going to review, and then once that's ready to go, like I said, the the real issue is how do we get the existing data into that schema? So that's something I'll talk to him about as well. Yeah, um, yeah it looks like he's got that on his his roadmap here, Selene ninety seven. Okay. So, uh, okay, great. Um, Derek's already talked about uh, the Mark II uh, developer kit uh, progress, so I don't really have anything to add to that. Uh, we're going to try to do the second spin as quickly as possible um, while also finding a way to uh, make it so that we can get small quantities produced relatively easily. Um, but we're not right now gearing up for production. This is not we're not there yet. We've still got a lot of things to do before we get to that point. So we're not even looking for a place that can, you know, produce things in volume, let alone do the, you know, assembly, uh, you know, final assembly of the various components uh, and packaging and warehousing and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's still a lot I of steps have, before we get there. Yeah, but when you're ready for that, I may have some input for you. I, I ran a warehouse where we did a lot of manufacturing offshore in, in mainland China and some in Taiwan and some of the Philippines. And I have good contacts. It was owned by three Russians, and I'm still on friendly terms with them. They're older guys. They're, when I say older, that means they're older. They're kind of retired. But but Slav has really good contacts on mainland China. His dad was a uh, general in the Russian army, and uh, so he has inside contacts, actually. Uh, so when you're ready for production and possibly offshore assembly if you want to, uh, I can put you in touch with Slav. And uh, he can just give you any names of any places he might recommend. That's all I'm saying when you're ready for Sure. That, that sounds great. Thanks. Uh, other than that, um, you know, fundraising process is moving along. Uh, so far, indications are positive. And um, that's all I can say about that now. Um, so... Uh, that's it. Unless Josh, do you have anything on the development side that you want to talk about? No, it sounds like people are making good progress. It'd be good to uh, um, keep pushing towards actually shipping product. We have plenty of demand out there for people who want this, so um, we we'll just keep scrambling when you get it done. So there was some discussion uh, at the board um, about. Um, trying to quantify our progress. And um, I realize that that's probably a little bit of, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that, that makes makes people look cross-eyed at managers. But, um, you know, with such a small team, I, I don't necessarily know that those kinds of, uh, like coming up with numerical indications of progress are useful, but... Um, but I, I just wanted to raise the idea with the team and see what, you know, if you guys have any thoughts about um, how we can best communicate that we are, that we have good momentum and that we're, um, you know, when we're uh, on track and when we're doing things as, as we expect and hope them to be uh, getting done or, and, you know, when we've run into a hiccup or, you know, when things are moving slower than, than expected, right? Um, Predictability is uh, is one of the things that makes us all feel a lot better. Um, and right now, we're not working towards a specific timeline, um, and I think that's because of the you know the huge amount of uncertainty in um, in some of the issues that we're working with, um, and you know additionally the size of the small team. Uh, but we, um, but you know, I'd like to get to a path. You know, as the team grows, we're going to need to have more certainty or at least more insight into you know the progress that we're making and the ability to make um if not accurate then roughly accurate projections about progress so uh, i was wondering Much if like, you guys have any said thoughts progress, about that said progress refers to mark II shipability as an endpoint or is it something else no, that that's a well. That's an excellent question, and I think that is a good answer to that question. So yeah, because yeah, I mean, I the stake in the ground is when we have a final, um, I don't know, proof of concept or a final piece of hardware. Now, what we're working on now is 
the software in anticipation of that day. But we do know, I think we all, if not, you know, covertly, or not overtly, but at least covertly recognize that once we get those, we'll know a lot better about where we're going to be um, once we get the actual prototype. So while we can sit there and say, well, we believe the code line is ready to accommodate the Mark II, until we get Mark IIs and we get the existing code on there and know what we're up against and what's really not working and, you know, because I anticipate the issues being more low level initially, like speakers aren't working right or whatever. And those are really just unknowns at this point, right? So that's my concern is, you know, we, we need at least a date of when will we have reasonably completed prototypes in the, our developers' hands so that then we can apply what we've done on that and then see better where we're at. That would be my cut. The, uh, you know, I don't think we need to be zero to 100% on stuff. Um, we can simply do a bullet list of major tasks with subtasks and start checking them off. I mean, the, the, the hardware software integration is down towards the bottom of that list, but you know, there's lots of other stuff that needs to be done higher up, like you know, Wi-Fi setup and you know, uh, configuration and account creation and you know, fixing the wake word spotting software and getting the uh, the machine learning uh, getting the machine learning data loop up and running. Like all of those things are are binary tasks, right? Like either people can submit data and train on it. Um, where they can't and so if we had a list of major tasks and said okay here are all the bigger things we need to do we need to have a music player that works right so on and so forth and then the subtasks you know if, if that music player turned out to be spotify then we would need to you know establish a relationship with spotify communicate to the community that they need to have an account and so on and so forth um i think something like that would help us to define the end state because they're they're there's a you know as google and amazon have really demonstrated you can put 20 billion dollars into this piece of technology but for for us like where where is like 1.0 and we thought we were there with the mark one and clearly we weren't so it'd be great to have for the mark two some kind of solution because you know we we did ship the mark one without a working software stack right so shipping doesn't necessarily mean it's done or ready for ready for customers no no absolutely correct absolutely correct you're absolutely right um, that that merging of the software onto the new hardware is going to be way downstream, and we do have other issues that can be addressed as major projects and sub projects between now and then. We just need to surface them. You're right, and we need a we need kind of what I just did for the precise project for the entire project. Yeah, a big bullet list. That says, here are the big tasks. Here are the small tasks. Let's check them all off one at a time until we hit the end state and we ship. Well, we do yeah, have a we, we have a we have a list of much. several hundred bullet items, um, in the form of Jira tickets, uh, and uh, we've created um, some overall. Uh, I guess they're called epics here, uh, where you know we've listed. Okay, this is the epic that defines uh, when the hardware is ready to ship. This is the epic when the software is ready for you know consumer uh, use and things like that. Um, so, but we, those are very high level. We haven't gone through and like divided them into sub projects yet, um, or even tried to make them into something that we could tackle in a, in a piecemeal fashion. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, and I'm sure that not all of the work that we need to do is in the list there now, but a lot of it is. Um, and so I guess the question is, how do we go about turning that into some sort of, um, realistic uh, projection about um, you know how much work we have left to do and how how or even not even maybe it's not even how much work we have to do maybe it's um, how fast are we getting the work done right this is you know yeah. we've all we've all worked on projects uh, you know uh, with with bigger dev teams than, than this one and you know you can kind of have a sense for how how much time things are going to take um, but um, but it would be nice to be able to actually see that happening as we you know we're going to start to be able to hire more people here in, in a few months uh and you know we need to know um that uh you know where where best to apply those resources right um have, have you seen 
fruit salad estimation. <laughs> it's, it seemed to come up a few times this year um, on Twitter and stuff. Uh, and essentially, it's it's you know doing time estimations, but with different types of fruit instead of trying to say this is going to take one day and this is going to take one week and blah 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 because they're always wrong and yeah people don't want to put something on there because you don't know if it's going to be true or not. Whereas this is like there's there's different versions of it, but the first one that came up for me was was a grape. The first one's a grape because it's completely trivial. You just pop it in your mouth and eat it. That's that's the end of it, um, and then it goes on to an apple, which you know takes more than more than one bite to eat. Sometimes you need to cut it up a little bit, but you know, still one sitting and one person and all that sort of thing, right through to like a pineapple. Who even knows how to cut that up? But like eventually you get in there, and you know that there, there might be some unknowns and all that sort of stuff. Watermelon is a real wild card. You need a machete to cut it up there. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then uh, a tomato, which is apparently a fruit, but you don't even know if it really belongs here. So like, well, it has seeds. <laughs> yeah. Um, or they've got an avocado, which is also a fruit, but it goes bad really quickly. Uh, it's completely not scopable because it's a chore or something that fixes... Anyway, like we could come up, we could use an existing scheme or come up with our own or something. But supposedly, people have found it useful to to use for time estimations because, I mean, it's it's slightly it's it's more uh, it's more of an estimate than nothing. But it's not a something that that developers feel like they're being tied to. You know, you said this would take eight hours, and it's taken ten hours. Like, what did you? You know, no, it sounds thing. great. The only the only additional thing we'd need is dependencies worked into that model somehow. Hmm. Right. You know, I can't I can't eat I can't attack this this couple of grapes until I have this pineapple done or whatever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, I just wanted to raise the issue. Um, it's not it's not critical right now. Uh, I just you know as long as we're keeping our our uh, train tracks, you know, well laid ahead of us. We don't run a lot of train tracks. I think we'll be we'll be fine. Um, so, uh, but maybe I, I mean maybe in the first instance we should look at those files. Said, I mean, we could, you know, Josh, like Josh said, we could identify some of the larger. I guess you're calling them epics, Michael, or sub projects. And then we could take a stab at estimation using the fruit salad approach and incorporate some dependencies. And, and at least that would give us a better, uh, let's just say a stake in the ground and a start and an attempt at being able to speak to when we think things are going to be done. Right. So, okay. Well, we, yeah, we can continue this conversation uh, later as well. Um, it's not an urgent issue. Uh, I think the way things are going now at, at this moment in time is fine. Um, but um, yeah, we'll be thinking about it. So any other questions or uh, big issues or topics that people uh, want to talk about that's not necessarily directly related to the work that they're doing now? Uh, just an administrative note. I got something from Johnny regarding invention disclosure form, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Oh, okay. So every month uh, we are encouraging all of a, everyone, really, uh, to file um, an idea. It's basically it's a submission for a patent idea. So if you fill out this form, uh, we you know, the rest of the team has a chance to review it. We run it over to our um, uh, the guy who's handling the uh, the patent uh, filings for us, and uh, and he'll take a look at it. And then if it looks like you know it's got a good chance of going through, then we'll go on and and pursue a full on uh, patent for that idea. And the idea here is that even though we're an open source company, uh, I think that it will be prudent for us to have patents on those parts of the 
you know, the products that we're working on that we can patent um, for defensive purposes. And, you know, we can contribute these into the, uh, um, you know, into any one of a number of different working groups uh, that are basically alliances of open source patents, uh, patents for, um, you know, sort of like a, a mutual um, uh, non-aggression pact between open source companies, right? Um, so I think uh, this is just one of, you know, it's just one more way of, of defending ourselves that's relatively inexpensive uh, versus, you know, um, people out there who might eventually take notice of us and, and want to do bad things. So, um, so possibly like the phase two GUI based um, model. Well, don't mention it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But okay. So, so there's a form somewhere I can fill out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's just like, uh, I, I think it's like a word doc or something like that. Uh, yeah, I'll make, I'll make sure you get the link to it. Okay. Yeah. And so the, at the first of every month, we, we encourage people to have them submitted. Um, and we go through and we'll have a, a brief meeting to discuss what people have submitted. Um, so far, Gez and I are the only ones who've submitted one yet. So. Um, okay. I have one that I can submit, but excellent. I don't know how well it all is, but it's, it's worth a shot. I have I have in the past had twenty one patents issued to me, and I can promise you that maybe two or three of them were actually any good. So the process is not, uh, and, and as far as I can tell, the the uh, although it's theoretically not possible or legal to get a software patent, it seems that that's um, uh, easily overcome. So. The system is a mess, and it's it's a wreck, and I hate to have to participate in this way, uh, but you know, it's it's what it is. So um, we can become the one click of the voice recognition. Yeah, market. there you there you go. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, uh, anything else? Um, just on a slightly more personal. No, I was hoping to take a couple of days off um, very soon uh, because I've, I've got an opportunity to do a, one of the, the great hikes of Australia. Um, but the timing is not ideal. Uh oh. So it's, uh, it's the 26th, 25th through to the, the 29th of August. Um, so it's. Mm, it's, in our, it's in our review window, uh, but I wanted to throw it out there and um, because we are a small team and one person being away affects everyone. Um, yeah. What Have you thought yeah. about pushing up the release date for the 2008? Um, well, I kind of I, I factored this in in terms of the those release dates that I was talking about because, you know, if I can, if we can get the, uh, the soft release out before I go and then the community has um, the week to to test and review it um, and then any anything that's wrong I sh will hopefully have time to fix in the when I get back before we actually do the, the proper release um, so that was my thinking there there's there's never a good time to take time off guys I mean it's just a small team it's it's never a good time so if you've got an opportunity to go do something they, they only issue like so many permits and you have to like apply for them or something yeah yeah that's it and because of covid yeah if you, you have, have yeah if you have an, if you have yeah. an opportunity to go and get poisoned by spiders snakes plants the soil and the water in the outback of Australia I encourage you to <laughs> not do that but come back in there one are, piece there are a lot of crocodiles is the uh number one <laughs> yeah or what happens if you get eaten by a koala bear or beaten up by a kangaroo <laughs> kangaroos don't mess around but you got you forgot crocodile sharks and poisonous jellyfish like australia is quite the place to have fun yeah, yeah. uh all right yeah so go do that i think what uh let's just set up a plan to make sure that yeah. we do a good release. You know, if it looks, if it's looking squirrely when you get back, like there's too many issues have been noted, we can just push back the release by a week. You know, it's not, yeah, yeah. Yeah. no one's counting on this. Um, 
being released on a particular day. So. Yeah, that's true. Um, I didn't know if there was anything with Project Rollover too. You know, I didn't want something to some hard deadline to to hit there. No, there's there's no deadlines in there. Okay. Cool. And certainly, uh, that release doesn't affect rollover at all. So. Oh no, I just meant in terms of I right. other things. Same. Yeah. 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 Cool. Oh, all right. This is exciting and scary. It's gonna be a five-day hike with a one-year-old. <laughs> oh boy. Oh you're yeah, that's your, terrifying. You're gonna take your daughter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How wow. else is he gonna get the crocodiles <laughs> to come near enough to hit him with his his, <laughs> his, his, his uh, uh, Paul Hogan knife? Yeah, it's gonna be. Reminds me of the old Tarzan where they uh, tie the kids, a rope around the kids, and throw them in to lure the crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and there's dingoes too. I don't. You've you've probably heard the dingo story of Australia. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> All right. Well, Check have fun. You almost got taken by an eagle the other day, for a kite, technically. But that was kind of scary. You mean the shark uh, video? No, no. This this um, bird of prey like swooped Harry and tried to grab her. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. We had words. <laughs> it didn't try again. <laughs> didn't try again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, cool. <laughs> all right. Yeah, we'll have fun with that. Um, be, be safe. Uh, Hopefully, we come back. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then uh, I'll talk to you all on Wednesday. Then, right? Yep. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Good. Michael, um, maybe you should also set up a send out an updated invite for Wednesday because right yeah. now everybody's on Monday and Thursday, right? Yeah, for sure. We'll send we'll update the schedule. Okay, cool. All right. All right, everybody. Talk to you on Wednesday. Thanks, folks. Bye. Bye. See you. I'll get the hang of this one of these days.